So hello and welcome back. So let's carry on here with four more tips that will help you. But remember with these tips, they are simple, they are easy to do, but you have to do the work if you want to start feeling, you know, feeling better and feeling results. Okay, so tip number six is to be positive. And that means that you start telling yourself that you can and will get over this. Find a phrase that signifies a happy, knock free future for you and keep repeating that over in your mind every time you start thinking the bleak thoughts or feeling the craving to be with your ex again remember the pause button i talked about in the previous video well i'd say go back over those and go over exercise two three and four that i shared in that one and do these as often as you need to okay and number seven is just breathe. I probably should have made this number one. <laughs> so just take a few moments to breathe, tune into yourself, let your body relax. And again, go to imagining a stress-free life, a narc-free life, a nice, pleasant future for yourself. Do this several times a day and really wallow in your imagination and feel what it would be like to live in freedom. Now, this is a tip I share often because it's really fast, it's simple, and it is effective when you do it. It gives you an opening into the possibility that you can be happy again. So the more you do that, the more you just widen the gap between how you're feeling now and where you want to be in the future, okay? So tip number eight is take it one day at a time. Remember that trauma bonding is just like an addiction to alcohol or drugs. So do what recovering addicts do and take it one day at a time. Understand that healing these emotional wounds will take time, especially if you're trying to work through it on your own. It can happen much more quickly if you can work with a professional, work with a therapist to help you get over it. But in the meantime, if you can't do that, well, for whatever reason, just understand that it will take time and that each day will get better as long as you maintain strict no contact and focus on yourself and healing yourself. And that brings me to the final tip, which is tip number nine. It's probably one of the most important tips you can work on of all of them. Tip number nine is to remember who you are. It's really one of the best pieces of advice I can give you. Remember who you truly are and who you were before you met this awful toxic person, okay? The huge mistake that people unknowingly make when they get involved with a narcissist is that they give away their personal power. They start relying on the narcissist's perception and opinion of who they are to define them and they forget all their good qualities and they start needing the narcissist's approval to validate them and determine their worth as a person. This is absolutely crazy. Nobody died and made the narcissist God. You are a perfectly fine and worthy person just as you are, or rather who you were before they got their hooks into you. So sit down and really think about that and ask yourself, how much have you lost of yourself since you met this person? And what's it going to take to get you back? Now, when you start thinking like this and asking these kinds of questions, you'll start moving yourself towards your way back towards finding yourself again. And that's the most important part of healing. It's about reconnecting with yourself, the essence of who you are, finding your self-worth again. Because when you have rock solid self-worth, you're never going to put up with this kind of bullshit treatment ever again. Let me tell you, okay? So I hope you found those helpful. Please comment in the comments if you found them helpful or you if you've used other um, tips and tricks yourself that have really helped you. Share those because maybe someone, you know, they'll help someone who's watching these videos, okay? So thank you so much. I'll see you again soon and I will have more tips for you on how to deal with and heal from narcissistic abuse. Bye for now.